Hey, welcome back. It's Joe again. You're probably noticing that I'm wearing the same shirt that I wore yesterday because I haven't actually really moved out of this chair. Uh, but if you watched the pickups video from yesterday, you know that I got a couple of mystery games at Too Many Games. Uh, these are, so if you watched this this video, I explained. If you didn't, I'm going to explain again. So I apologize if you watched yesterday's video. Um, these are uh, Nintendo Power Cartridges. This one doesn't even have a label. These are Nintendo Power Cartridges from Japan. And what, what the deal was is for the Game Boy and the Super Famicom, and they had done it earlier with the Famicom Disk System, but I don't think it was technically called Nintendo Power. It was called something else. There's nothing to do with the, the US magazine. Um, the Nintendo Power Cartridges, you would there's a kiosk in game stores, and you would put the game in the cartridge. You'd buy the blank cartridge put the game in, you pick a game, it would put the game, you, there's a one through seven on here, you could hold, could hold multiple games depending on the size. And it was basically an alternative to rentals because it's not legal to rent games in Japan. So it was a cost-effective way for people to play different games. If you got tired of it, you could take it back to the, con the uh, console or the, the kiosk and plug it in there and you could delete the game and you could put a different game on there. Now I should make it clear these are not the same as the Teleview cartridges. Um, so there's not, this is not, neither of these is Radical Dreamers. Whatever they are, they're not Radical Dreamers, for example. Um, or, you know, BS, the Teleview Excite Bike, or uh, Zelda Stone Tablets, or whatever. It's, they're not that. They're none of those. Uh, but I don't know what they are. I bought these from Stone Age Gamer. They didn't know what they were, they hadn't checked them. And uh, so I've cleaned them up. Uh, I've cleaned the contacts at least, and right now uh, I'm going to plug them in. My Super Nintendo is recording, so I'm going to plug them in, and we're going to find out what's on these, and you guys are going to find out along with me what is on these cartridges. We'll start with the no-label one first. We'll see what's on this. Okay, so there are three games on this one. Uh, my kanji is not very good. The first one is Pro something three. I don't think that's ya Yakyu is baseball. I don't think that's what that says. Second one is Puzzle Bobble, which is Bust a Move. Uh, third one, Super Mario. Sorry, my Japanese is a little rusty. Um, let's start with this one. Let's see what it is. Pro something. Kiwame 3. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> all right, yes. There are save games on here. It's a Mahjong game because of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, so to quit out of these, you can't, you have to reset, right? So we're gonna reset. Oh wow, okay, apparently resetting alone doesn't do it. We're gonna, we're gonna have to turn it off. Turn the system off. Turn it back on. Okay, Mahjong. <laughs> kind of a bust, right? Puzzle Bobble. I don't think I need to show you Puzzle Bobble. Uh, well, whatever. I will. Bust a move. Puzzle Bobble. Taito. Published by Taito. Bub and Bob. In Puzzle Bobble. This is the very first Bust a Move game. This is a port of the Neo Geo game. Okay, so anyways, you get the point. My dad got really into Puzzle Bobble. Re get my, sorry, my dad got really into Bubble Witch recently, which I, I then explained to him is just Puzzle Bobble. 
So this is Super Mario something, but my my uh, katakana is not great. Oh, correction. So this is Super Mario. I'm gonna guess it's Super Mario All Stars. Uh, which is cool because you can see the different box arts. It's got the Japanese box arts instead of the U.S. ones. I would have hoped this is the version of with Mario World All Stars and World. No such luck. Um, but hey. Mario All-Stars is cool, and it's got the actual Mario 2, so it's got the different title screens. So, real quick, we can take a look. And, uh, we'll see, that's the Super Mario USA title screen. So there we go. Uh, not bad, not bad. Um, definitely worth the only couple of bucks I paid. That's number one. Number two, this is the one with the label intact. In we go. Power on. Let's see what we get. We only have one game on this one. And there is too much kanji there for me to be able to read. So we'll just jump right in. Oh, okay, it's a Konami game. I like that. I like, I like any time it's a Konami game. It's a thumbs up for me. Ha! We love soccer, Fighting Eleven. So... That's a conversation piece more than anything else, because I can tell you right now, likelihood that I spend any significant amount of time playing fighting soccer, or what, uh, we love soccer, fighting 11 is nil. Uh, but again, um, really interesting conversation piece and what they cost me, the folks at Stone Age Gamer gave me a really great deal, and the, and uh, again, the Japanese Super Mario All-Stars is cool to have, and uh, Puzzle Bobble is cool to have. Um, that's something that could be an episode in the future if I ever get my hands on a Neo Geo, uh, or something like that. So hey, what he said. So there you go. That's what we got. So thanks for tuning in to my mystery cartridge unveiling and my little short history lesson about the uh, Nintendo Power kiosks. And uh, yeah, uh, the panel from Too Many Games will be going up soon, I hope. And uh, more episodes of Same Name, Different Game and Obscure Old Games are on the way. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you next time.